This is the new Audi A5 Sportback, and you can think of it as being a combination between the practical A4 saloon, which is like shampoo, and the stylish A5 coupe, which is like conditioner. But why take two bottles into the shower when you can have a combined shampoo and conditioner, which is what the A5 Sportback is? It's practical and it's stylish. Why has someone given me anti-dandruff shampoo? What are they trying to say? It's really cheeky. Anyway, the A5 Sportback, so it starts from £33,000 and like for like it's the same price as the A5 Coupe. Now if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk you can compare offers from dealers and buy a price you're confident in. And on average people save £3,600 on a new car at Carwire. So big thing about this car are the back doors. That makes it way easier to get into the back than the A5 Coupe. Also this sport back is slightly longer as well so you get a lot more knee room than in the back of the coupe and it's just well, pretty much as room in the back as in the normal a4 saloon if i sit up straight headroom that's all right as well despite the sloping roof line and yeah one problem is this big hump in the floor though which means this center seat is only for occasional use it's not very comfortable carrying three people in the back of this car at once and if you click it there you can see for yourself by watching our detailed practicality video you can see how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot and well, what it's like trying to fit a baby seat in the back here, but I'll go into some more detail on the practicality in a second, such as, look, so if I fold this down, you've got an armrest with a bit of storage under there, and I like these, look, these little cup holders. So you've got massive rear door bins, and those are there as well if you need them. Also, as standard, this car comes with a central seat that does fold down if you need to carry longer items. And that brings us on to the boot. So one of the other key features of the A5 Sportback is its useful hatchback tailgate. So that makes it much easier to load and unload than a normal traditional saloon. It also means that you can fold the seats down and you get quite a big load area. Makes the car more practical. And when you fold them down, look, they don't lie completely flat, but you do have a continuous boot floor. So it makes it easy enough to slide bigger items to the front of the car. You've also got some tethering points there, there, some net. And under here is a space saver spare wheel. So there we go. A5 Sportback. Key differences, there's rear doors and that hatchback tailgate. In the front then, surprise, surprise, it's identical to the A5 Coupe. So that means you've got a really nice, simple design. Everything just feels really high quality, well screwed together. It's a very nice place to be. Now as standing in this car, you get tri-zone climate control, you get cruise control with a speed limiter, and you get sport seats as standard, which is a nice touch, and they are very comfortable. There's decent practicality as well as a nice design. So there's plenty of cubby spaces. This one down here is absolutely huge. Look, you can fit a big bottle, well, a big-ish bottle in it, and the door bins are large as well. In terms of infotainment system, as standard, you get a seven inch system. This is the one here. Now that comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can use the sat nav from your phone through the main screen there. You can upgrade it to have SD card satellite navigation, pay some extra again to have Audi Connect with internet facilities such as live traffic, and then you can use Google or Maps. But I suggest you upgrade to the bigger eight inch screen because you get a faster processor, crisper graphics, and then you can upgrade the normal digital display, which is between normal analog dials for the full on Audi virtual cockpit which looks beautiful and you can get some more information on that if you click up there to watch our detailed infotainment video now though it's time to find out what the audi a5 is like to drive so let's hit the road so the a5 sportback uses slightly stiffer suspension than you get in the normal a4 saloon and yeah in the old car it used to feel a little bit too firm riding but this one despite the fact it's a bit stiffer it it's still nice and comfortable it rides bumps very well now if you buy an SE model or the Sport, they get the Comfort suspension. But if you have the S line, it has lower stiffened suspension. And that does make it feel firmer the ride. But if you want to, you can ask your dealer to just fit you the car with the normal Comfort suspension. And then it's great. And really, if you are wanting to have the S line looks with the lower, lower ride height and the big wheels, you might want to spend the £900 to get the optional adaptive dampers because they have a sports mode and a comfort mode and that rides even better than the standard car. But on the whole, yes, the A5 Sportback, it's a comfy car to travel in. It's quiet as well and visibility on the whole is pretty good, although the rear window isn't the biggest, but it's not too bad. The controls, nicely weighted. Steering, sharp, accurate, and the car does handle very well. So this particular version is the front wheel drive model and it grips as well as you need it to. If you want to really throw this car around though, you'll probably want to go for the Quattro all wheel drive model, which has a slightly rear drive bias. But really, if it's sporty handling you want, 
the the A5 Sportback isn't quite as much fun to drive as say a BMW 4 Series a Grand Coupe. From launch, the engine choices will be a two-liter diesel with 190 horsepower, and that's one fitted this car. It's the Ultra model, so it should give good economy. Audi claims around six, eight miles per gallon, though in reality, you're gonna be looking around high 40s, low 50 miles per gallon. You can also get a two liter turbo petrol with 252 horsepower, and that's pretty blooming quick. And you'll also be able to get a V6 diesel with around 218 horsepower. You can also get a three liter V6 twin turbo petrol in the S5, which can do naught to 60, in around 4.7 seconds. And whichever engine or gearbox you go for, they're all good. It's pretty difficult to go wrong, really. Now, a lot of you guys might be thinking, why the heck, Matt, aren't you driving the more exciting petrol? Well, if you click up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride, I will be driving the S5 and I'll also be seeing how fast it can get to 60 miles an hour. Anyway, let's move on to five annoying things about this new Audi A5. The pointed design of the window means it's all too easy to accidentally spear yourself when you get in the car. Ah, I actually hurt. The rear windows only go down this far, which is rubbish. Two litre diesel models come with a rather small 40 litre fuel tank, which means that the range isn't actually better than the two litre petrols because that has a 58 litre fuel tank. While parking sensors are standard, you have to pay an extra £450 if you want a reversing camera on all models. The ice fix covers are really tough to remove, actually hurts your finger and there's a good chance you'll lose them. However, it's not all bad. There's plenty to like about the new A5 such as these following features. You get an automated tailgate as standard and you can choose how high it opens so that you don't bash it in a low roof garage. The predictive efficiency assistant uses sat-nav data to tell you how to drive more economically depending on which road you're on. The A5 Sportback is up to 85 kilos lighter than its predecessor, which is like removing an average size man from the car. Go on, off you go, average size man. It's really cool the way you've got the temperature for the climate control actually in the dials. With Audi Connect services, you can monitor your fuel consumption and even find out where you parked your car using your mobile phone. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and save an average of £4,100 on a new Audi A5 Sportback at carwow.co.uk. So then, my verdict on this car, should you avoid it, should you consider it, should you shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the A5 Sportback. You see, I'd rather have it than the less practical A5 Coupe, but I'd still save myself some money and get an A4 Saloon. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and subscribe to our channel. And if you click on the video windows, you can watch our detailed practicality, infotainment and 360 degree passenger ride videos. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in the video? It was the A5 size notepad and the car's false boot floor.